Hi, I want to talk to you today about something that neither your vet or your dog trainer would ever think of or even bring up when you have a dog that is struggling with obedience or behavior um, or they're just simply failing to thrive. Maybe they're picky eaters and have digestive issues. Maybe they have reoccurring illnesses or infections. These are dogs that are simply unhealthy. Physically, mentally, emotionally, they're dogs that just are not doing well. And so my name is Christine. I am a canine health coach uh, with Dogs for Life Training and Wellness. And today's topic is about Candida albicans. And so you may never have heard of that before, but Candida albicans is actually a yeast overgrowth in the digestive system that just causes havoc to the whole body and sometimes can be very difficult in diagnosing. So symptoms of Candida, from a behavioral standpoint, these dogs might actually display um, irritability and aggressive uh, behaviors. They experience a lot of discomfort and pain, which could lead to irritability and uncharacteristic aggression. Maybe your dog is not normally, but maybe you start noticing that they're very moody. Um, they could be restless, have some hyperactivity, disrupted sleep, showing signs of anxiety, depression. When you have these chronic health issues, it can really <clears throat> uh, create some behavioral issues that display in a lot of different ways. We could start seeing that there are going to be behaviors, which is when you might be calling in a dog trainer to help you, when in fact, it's just simply an effect or a side effect to having candida. The other thing we'll mention is the mental effects that it has on dogs. When you have chronic inflammation and discomfort, it can cause cognitive dysfunction confusion, disorientation, as well as memory issues. It can cause a lack of drive in the dog. It can cause a learning disability uh, where they're having difficulty maintaining information, following instruction, and they just simply have a poor response. The other um, thing, so we talk about behavioral issues, mental issues, as well as the physical issues that candida can cause, which is going to be like red, itchy skin. It could be inflamed skin. It could be hot spots. It could be digestive upsets. It could be gas and bloating, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Um, and so you could see from a physical standpoint, this is why vets have a difficult time with diagnosing because candida can have so many different symptoms that they're trying to treat for. So it could have muscle and joint issues, inflammation, uh, stiffness, lameness, chronic ear infections. Uh, and so really it can present itself in so many different ways. And then also, we're talking about the emotional health of your dog, how candida affects them. It can be very frustrating when the dog is not feeling well and they've got skin issues and they're scratching and they're chewing on themselves and they can't concentrate and they're fidgety and they're feeling tired and sleepy and moody. And so from an emotional standpoint, Again, you could see maybe your dog withdrawing. Maybe they're having more mood swings. Maybe they don't want to play anymore. Maybe their interactions have changed. And so all of these things are symptoms of candida. And so you might be asking yourself, how does a dog get candida? Well, it's really not as uncommon as you think. Um, candida is a yeast overgrowth that comes and is fed by what we would consider carbohydrates or starchy or sugary foods. 
which primarily is about 90% of what people feed their dogs. And you're probably like, wait a minute, I'll feed my dog treats and sugar and starch. But you know what? It's in your brown kibble or brown pellet dog food. And so to help you to better understand, um, what I wanted to do is just share with you a couple of different brands and show how you can um, determine whether your dog is experiencing or has a diet that's actually feeding the yeast growth causing the issues for candida. And so I took some popular brands that maybe you're feeding yourself or maybe you've heard about, but I just want to share with you exactly kind of how that, let me see if I can pull this up here, um, how that uh, plays a part. And so um, this is ProPlan, which is, uh, Purina is a popular uh, dog food ProPlan, probably heard of if you're not feeding it. But these here are the ingredients. Um, and so based on the ingredients, uh, we're looking at chicken, rice, uh, whole grain wheat, and then poultry byproduct, and so forth. And so, well, you know, maybe it sounds pretty good to you. But here's what needs to happen for you to understand. If your dog's diet is high in carbohydrates, Carbohydrates converts into starch and sugars, which is what feeds the candida. Then what we need to do is, it doesn't sound like maybe the dog is getting a lot of starch uh, going on here, but what we need to do is look at the guaranteed analysis. And so when we look at the guaranteed analysis, what we're looking at is your macronutrients. So Dog food labels do not have all three macronutrients, your macronutrients being your protein, your fat, and your carbohydrates. And simply, they don't put the carbohydrates on there because they don't want you to know how much carb is in your dog's food. Because you know as well as I do, High carbohydrate diets, whether it be for humans or dogs, is really just an inflammatory and unhealthy dog, uh, unhealthy food. So, if we want to figure out how much carbs are in here, we just assume that if you were to add up your protein and your fat and your carbohydrates to equal a hundred percent of the ingredient and or macronutrients. Then what we're going to do here is add up, they give you us the two here. So here for the pro plan, you have the 26% protein, you've got a 16% fat, and then they've got 12%, uh, or excuse me, a 3% fiber. Anything below that, which is just simply vitamin supplements, are minuscule, and so they really don't have any particular percentage um, that is uh, that is required for us to subtract out of it. So what we want to do is subtract your protein, your fat, and your fibers. And so if we add up the 26 plus 16 and 3, we've got 45 um, percent. And if you subtract 45 percent from 100, you have 55% carbohydrates in this diet. And so 55% of this diet is a high starch, high carbohydrate, high sugar diet, which is feeding a candida. And so again, not all dogs have candida, but we're talking about dogs that just are really struggling and not thriving, whether it be, as I mentioned, mental, physical, emotional, Maybe they're struggling in their obedience and their abilities to learn, things of that nature, and or simply you have an unhealthy dog. And so these are um, what we're talking about. So if you're one of those people, then this, this is for you. 
Um, with that being said, another food that I think is very popular is the blue buffalo. And so you might be feeding this particular one along um, and or have heard of it. If we look at the guaranteed analysis for here, we've got 18% protein, 10% fat, and then 7% as a fiber. And so if you add that up, you're looking at 35% of your macronutrients minus the 100. And so that gives you 65% carbohydrates. Then I thought um, some people might think, well, maybe you're feeding a grain-free diet, or maybe you're buying a uh, product that is a higher quality product than the blue buffalo or the Purina. And so um, I want it just to kind of show you that it really doesn't matter what it is that you're feeding, you're still going to have a high carbohydrate diet. And so here we've got a Stella and Chewy, which is a raw coated kibble. It's a chicken recipe. You can see here it's grain free. And so when we look at our protein is at 35%. You've got your fat at 16% and your fiber at 5%. And when you add that all up, you're at 56% of your macronutrients, so macronutrients. And you subtract that by 100, and that leaves you 44% carbohydrate. Anytime that you have a, uh, a kibble form food, I'm going to tell you that it is going to be a high starch diet whether it's grain and or grain free. And that is because they need some form of a starch to stick that little cookie together. And that is what converts into the carbohydrates or the starch and the sugar, which is what feeds your candida. And so you're probably wondering at this point, like what can you do to help restore your dog's health? This is a process. When you have candida or your dog is suffering from candida, it can be a bit of a road to recovery. Um, and it requires, first off, getting off of foods that are ultra processed and or high in starch and high in sugars, which convert into the food uh, for the candida. And so you're going to want to get onto a fresh food diet. And when I'm talking about a fresh food diet, I'm talking about lean meats with greens. That's going to be the baseline. It's kind of like a cleansing diet that you need to start with. So getting your dog on a fresh food diet. However, when you're putting them onto a fresh food diet, you cannot be adding any starches. So in other words, you're not going to be adding rice or sweet potatoes and or butternut squash or, uh, you know, anything like peas and carrots. All of those are high sugar and high starch foods. And so at first, we want to completely wipe that out. You feel that you need to check with your vet. Of course, you should. Um, and or you have a dog that, as I mentioned, was suffering from um, thriving. This might be something that you want to kind of discuss with your uh, veterinarian uh, at first. However, as I mentioned, most vets aren't even going to be thinking about a candida diet. They're not going to know how to handle a candida diet. And most likely what they're going to do is recommend you to go on to one of their foods uh, prescription foods, which again is an ultra processed, poor quality, high starch, high carbohydrate diet that is not going to help resolve the issues that you have. So we've kind of talked about how dogs based on a dietary get candida because of the high starch, carbohydrates, and sugars in the diet. There are also other factors that play a part into the growth of candida, which one, we kind of talked about the diet. The second thing that is, um, is antibiotics. 
a lot of times what happens is our dogs are suffering from chronic ear infections, digestive upsets, skin and coat issues, and your vet has been prescribing antibiotics, which actually wipes out all of the healthy and unhealthy bacteria that is in your system, but it doesn't kill the yeast. And so what ends up happening is what little healthy bacteria you've had in your gut completely gets annihilated and the growth of the candida just takes form and increases the likelihood of these reoccurrence and more severity of some of those symptoms. The next thing is a weakened immune system. And so if the dog has already have a compromised immune system, then they're going to just be more susceptible to the candida and the candida overgrowth within the system. And finally, the other factor is gonna be stress. Anytime there's going to be stress, whether it be physical or emotional, this is gonna disrupt the balance of the gut flora, which again is going to help with the promoting of the yeast growth. And so when we're talking about earlier about the behavioral and the emotional stress and all of the other pieces, whether they be physical, all of those things compound into stress, which again creates that bigger cycle for the candida to continue to grow. But all of these are going to be symptoms which are generally misdiagnosed by your vet. Your dog trainer is going to additional stress on the dog when you're trying to train the dog, when the dog is just not in a good place mentally, physically, or emotionally to be able to go through a process of training. So the first thing you really need to do is get your dog healthy. And so you might be asking yourself, what do you need to do to begin to restore your dog's health? And so the first thing that needs to happen is we need to, I'm just gonna pull up this little, find where I am here, here we go. The first thing that we need to do is a lot of times when we see things that are going on with our dogs, we make the assumption that it's an allergy symptom or a, a food intolerance or something's going on. And this is where a lot of times people become very frustrated because nothing they do is seeming to work no matter what food they change to, what, what it is, because it's not an allergy symptom. It is a yeast overgrowth. So the first thing that we need to do is remove all of the processed foods. We want to remove processed foods that are high in starch, high in carbohydrates, high sugar. All of those convert into the food in which helps the candida thrive within the body. The next thing we want to do is detox. Um, and so when we're talking about detox, what we need to do is to start detoxing the organ system. So how you do that is when you remove the processed foods, you're going to have to replace it with fresh food. Make sure that you're looking at some of the fresh foods that do not have any of the carbohydrates. That means no sweet potatoes, no peas, no chickpeas, you know, no rice in them, things of that nature. So you've got Steve's, um, Steve's uh, which is a frozen uh, raw food. Um, you've got primal, you've got, um, let's see, small bites. You've got Viva, which is really, we totally recommend and support Viva. I'll make sure that there's a link for you um, to go to Viva. You can have that delivered right to your house. Um, so Again, when we talk about detoxing, the first thing is you need to remove that processed food. The next thing is we need a good, healthy proteins and then greens. Greens help to detoxify the body. So we're talking about dandelion, broccoli, cabbage, um, you know, Swiss chard, kale. These are all foods that are going to help detox. So you could either put the greens into the food, you could sprinkle it onto the food when you've got dried because the reality is 
there are a lot of manufacturers that are out there that sell a detox support um, for dogs that you can just sprinkle directly into the into their food if you don't want to make it yourself. Uh, some other things that you could do is utilize something called bentonite clay. And so the nice thing about bentonite clay, it's a very gentle detoxifier. And what the clay does is it draws all the toxins into it, and then it helps it to move through the digestive system, and then it's going to exit as your dogs make a poop. Um, and so bentonite clay just kind of helps absorb the toxins and then moves it through the body and then eliminates. And so that's a nice, gentle way to detox. Um, let's see, there's also SEX. Um, SEX comes in a pill, a powder, and actually a tea. Um, and so SEX was developed many, many years ago, supposedly by an Indian uh, medicine woman uh, who had these particular herbs, and they found that the herbs help to shrink tumors and detoxify the system and help to restore health overall. I actually poured into my dog's food about half a cup um, because that helps with the increase of fluid. So one, moving to a fresh food diet increases fluids into the body naturally, adding fluids into the body, and then helping the dogs to um, drink more. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, is good because you want to flush all of those toxins out of the body. However, there is a die off symptom, which sometimes you'll notice that your dogs are feeling worse and you're like, oh my gosh, it's not working. But when you see that it's getting worse, what's happening is, is the toxins are releasing from the muscles and the tissues and the organs, and they now become into the circulation system and the dog is feeling more uncomfortable. So this is why making sure that your dogs are drinking a lot of water is to help flush all of the toxins out of the body. Um, but again, it is not uncommon to see the dog get worse before they get better. The next thing, probiotics and enzymes and antimicrobial herbs. And so as we're killing the yeast in the body, we want to start pushing in as much prebiotics and probiotics into the system so that it starts crowding out the yeast so that the yeast colony continues to get smaller and smaller. And as that happens, we're building more pre and probiotics. But we should start seeing some improvement um, with the dog at this juncture of the process. As you're moving into the probiotics and you're doing your enzymes into it, you might also want to add fermented foods. Um, and so they have fermented cabbages, uh, they have fermented be beets. Um, and so you may want to add fermented foods. Fermented foods offer pre and probiotics. And so again, the goal is to crowd out the yeast and replace it with healthy bacteria. And then finally, as I mentioned, we really wanna make sure that your dog is hydrated. Lots of water. And so you could do things like adding bone broth to their food, giving them a half a cup or a quarter cup of bro bone broth throughout the day. Um, I like to take my tuna and pour the tuna water into um, a measuring cup and then fill it, um, you know, a cup of uh, water in with the tuna water, and I'll put that in a jar, and then I can pour the tuna water. So anything that can help stimulate your dog to drink more, and so maybe a little bit more exercise and so forth, maybe that will help to get your dog to um, drink. And obviously, with the more hydration that they're having, because you're giving them more water and then plus they're on the fresh foods, um, then what we're going to want to do is to make sure we're taking our dogs out more frequently because they're gonna have to potty. And so we don't wanna have accidents um, in the house. So anyways, um, I'm hoping 
that if you are struggling with your dog in any way, whether it again be from an obedience standpoint and or a behavioral standpoint and or simply your dog is not thriving or seems unhealthy or has recurring issues, then maybe you would consider doing a candida free diet and trying to restore your health, uh, dog's health by utilizing some of these steps. Please visit us over at dogsforlife.com, which is our website. I am available um, for uh, assistance for anybody who is going through the process and uh, will need uh, a little bit more help, maybe some guidance with foods. Um, I will be adding recipes to the website. So look for a candida free diet um, that you can start with. And then of course, uh, from there, what you're going to want to do after you've gone through the process is stay on a healthy diet. And I will mention that it can take a while for this process for your dog to heal. So this is not something that just happens overnight. The yeast overgrowth didn't happen overnight and or in some cases when it came on really strong, it's probably generally when an antibiotic killed all of the healthy bacteria. And that's when you see that yeast growth just swoop in there and take over. And then all of a sudden your dog is rolling downhill. But anyways, um, again, I just want to say thank you very much. Um, and please join me again at Dogs for Life. And I hope you like this video. Please give it a like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on our next video. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye now.